So we have Okay. So we have one more concept left anonymous methods and asynchronous programming. Okay. So this is our last session in C sharp. And coming to Link we will discuss Link concepts when we discuss entity framework because before that you should gain some knowledge on sql server sql you must know how to write sql queries okay because in link you also will be using the similar concept of sql okay okay let's discuss anonymous methods and asynchronous what is anonymous method so anonymous method is very similar to your ordinary method Whenever you want to define an ordinary method, what has to be done? You have to specify the access specifier, public or private. Then specify the return type. Then specify the method name. In TA, in, right? So when it comes to anonymous method, and when it comes to your ordinary subprogram, this has to be written inside a class or structure. Right? You cannot write it anywhere as you like. You have to follow some standards. So it comes to anonymous method. Anonymous method means a method which doesn't contain any name. You don't have to define any name for your method. Okay. But it will make use of your delegate. Like this. We have discussed delegates, right? So using delegates, you can pass one subprogram as a parameter to another subprogram. Okay. So in case of anonymous methods, so whatever you are writing inside your ordinal method, same thing can be written. You can write anything inside anonymous method also. The only thing is anonymous means it doesn't contain any identity. It doesn't contain any name. That is called anonymous. Okay. So let's see one of those. But you have to make use of a delegate to pass your anonymous as a subprogram to another anonymous. So if you are working with multi-threading environments, if you are working with link queue, if you are working with asynchronous programming, there these methods are very useful. So you can write, if you want to you know, write some kind of action, you don't have to write a separate subprogram using some name. Wherever you need to write some action, you can make use of anonymous methods. So that's why C-Sharp has introduced anonymous methods in C-Sharp. So let's write one of these. Let's define a delegate, public delegate, written type is int and your delegate name, my delegate. Okay. Now within main, I can write my own subprogram. Right. If I want to add one more subprogram, like add product within main, can I do that? No, you cannot do that. But when it comes to anonymous, there are no restrictions. You can write it anywhere, wherever you need it. Okay. But all you need to do is you have to make use of a delegate. Okay. What is my delegate name? My delegate. Some OBJ is equal to use a keyword called a delegate delegate of give the same signature okay the signature of this should be matched with your delegate signature let's say int a comma int b now beginning of your method end of your method beginning of your method end of your method here you can write anything for example i want to find some int result is equal to zero okay so result is equal to a plus b that way Is delegate not there?
okay guys <clears throat> it has written type right delegate int okay so my delegate obj is equal to as i said you have to use a keyword of delegate and the signature of your delegate should be matched with your anonymous method signature same thing that we have written okay and this is your body here you can write anything so what does it return your delegate returns integer okay so here your method should also return integer so return a plus b okay so not only one statement here you can write n number of statements here you can write n number of statements integer sum write me sum is equal to a plus b and return sum so i'm writing multiple statements it is like a method integer sum in sum is equal to a plus b return sum you are writing like a method right this is the body of method and this is definition of a method the only thing is we are not giving any name in place of name we are using delegate read me and like this you can write it anywhere wherever you need it when it comes to ordinary sub program can i write add inside main method no i have to write it somewhere and have to call it from another method but coming to delegate coming to your anonymous method so this can be written anywhere so wherever you need to write some action as a sub program there you can make use of this thing and not only one line as i said it is very similar to your ordinary method the only thing is doesn't contain method name in place of method name we make use of delegate reference any questions guys now how do i invoke it as i said your delegate comes with a method called invoke console dot right line okay sum is obj dot invoke up now in order to invoke that method i have to supply two values for a and b sum is 30 so not only i can write another one also for example product i can write one more sub program if you want you can write all these things otherwise did not my delegate obj1 is equal to delegate of int x comma into y sir jodi bol ay namma sir first time you wrote one is sir okay nisha guys nisha let go run okay so for example i want to write one more sub program for multiplication yes use same definition return x into y return x into y now console dot right line product is obj dot invoke of obj1 invoke of 10 comma 20 see sum is 3 product is sum is 30 product is 300 200 one second guys I'm getting a call
Any questions, guys? See, within one sub program, I am able to write multiple sub program. So this is one sub program. This is another sub program. And within the inside this sub program, again you can write one more sub program if you want to. Are you to me? Within this, I can write one more sub program. So wherever you need to write it, for example, this is my sub program, right? Here. And within this, I can write one more sub program. My delegate obj2 is equal to delegate of rate me some <clears throat> into x comma into y okay A return x divided by y so like this wherever you need to write so what i'm doing here this is again kind of sub program this is a different sub program right inside one sub program i wrote another sub program again inside one sub program i can wrote another sub program again inside this you can write one more sub program already me so this kind of implementation is possible only through your anonymous methods any questions guys no sir okay so wherever you need to implement sub actions like action inside another action action inside another action there you need to write a sub program inside another sub program which is possible only through anonymous methods now you understood the purpose of anonymous right yes sir yeah okay next asynchronous programming so mostly we'll be using anonymous methods in case of uh, like when you work with your collections link you queries there we'll be using more anonymous methods okay next asynchronous programming so what is asynchronous programming for example here i'm going to write some set of actions like int let's say i'm writing a method like public white find some okay uh public int find some into a comma into b int the result is equal to zero int the result is equal to r <clears throat> for example c is equal to a star 10 int the result is equal to a plus b return result so result alert declared interrupts. so like this you'll be writing set of instructions inside every operation right so whenever you want to perform some action you'll be writing thousands of instructions now if i run my program what happens control will go to first line of your code start executing start the execution from there and it will be executing all the instructions one by one and it will not go to next line until the execution of the current line is completed this is called synchronous execution it will be executing in a sequence order first it will go to first line finish the execution of first line it will not go to second line until the execution of first line is finished next it will go to second line next start working on the second line and it will not go to third line until the execution of current line is finished are you getting me so this is called synchronous execution sometimes <clears throat> this might cause some issues like delay in response sometimes it might take more time than expected for example here i have written some thousands of instructions in one of the instruction we are calling some api some third party service what third source service will do, it will go and search for some third party file. There is a dedicated team. They will take care of keeping some Excel sheets in one of the server at some regular interval. Sometimes that will get delayed by one or two minutes. If their process is running slow, right? Sometimes that file get pushed. 
sometimes you know that process might take more than than expected okay sometimes there may be some delay in pushing that file okay so that's why sometimes you may not see that file at the expected time that might get delayed by more toward three minutes right so in this line we are calling a service the service is going to look for that file if that file is there it reads the content and extract the content send it to our calling environment by the time if the file is not available what has to be done it has to wait for more two to three minutes then do one more try read me so in this let us assume that so this line of instruction is going to invoke that service it calls that service it sends request to that service now the service is started looking for the file but the file is not available we know that sometimes it might get delayed if the file is not available at this point of time but i am sure that it will be available maybe after one or two minutes now what i have to do i should ask service to wait for more one or two minutes right it means you are wasting those one or two minutes time while it is waiting for another file another operation to be completed why do you want to divert your control to next line and why don't you execute other lines so that you can save some execution time right you can utilize this waiting time for executing another instructions another operations you are following me guys are you following me yes okay we know that <clears throat> this service we call this service now it went to that server and started looking for the file file is not there now we know that it might take more one or two minutes while waiting for that to be completed why don't you divert your control to work on another line another operation so that you can execute them parallelly right if you do not divert your control to work on another line so here only you have to wait for two minutes three minutes so you are wasting that processor time you are wasting your process time so what happens if this is supposed to be completed in one minute due to this it might get delayed by two or three minutes now right it is going to kill your productivity right it is taking more time than expected so while it is waiting for another operation to be completed you can divert the execution read me so don't wait for your service to send a response back rather divert your control to another line and execute other things while you are waiting for the service to be completed so you will be able to complete the things very faster you can save your execution time are you getting me so in synchronous programming so what it will do it doesn't divert your control to work on another line it will wait for service to return return response back to the calling environment it will wait until the service execution is completed if it is waiting for 4 minutes it will wait for 4 minutes it will never go to next line until the current line execution is completed so what happens in case of synchronous so in case, especially in these cases you will see a lot of delay in response right you are wasting your execution time it might degrade performance of your application are ready me so what has to be done so while you are waiting for another operations to be completed divert your control into another line of execution and get them executed parallelly so that you can save some execution time that way you will be able to speed up your process but how do i do that so that is not possible through your synchronous programming but that can be possible through another concept called asynchronous programming asynchronous synchronous and asynchronous synchronous means you have to wait until the current line execution is completed you have to wait until the response comes back to your calling environment asynchronous means you don't have to wait for service to return the response back to your calling environment you don't have to wait until the current line execution is completed parallelly you can go to another line and execute another line are you getting me so while you are waiting for one operations to be completed you will have a chance to complete another operation so you will be able to perform parallel programming 
रेडमी एनी क्वेश्चन कैस यस कैन हेयर मी या नो क्वेश्चन डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड कांसेप्ट ऑफ असिंक्रोनस या ओके ओके नाउ हाउ डू आई मेक इट असिंक्रोनस ओके इट इज वेरी सिंपल यू वुड यूज टू कीवर्ड्स असिंक अवेट टास्क असिंक अवेट टास्क why should i use these three to make your method as asynchronous method you should tell the system hey this method is going to be asynchronous you would use async keyword now you should tell the system when it comes to this particular line you know that it is going to take more time than expected i don't want to wait but still it has to be served parallelly here you would use to tell the system hey you can wait for this but i am going to execute another line you should use this keyword to execute that parallelly because here you are skipping this you just send the request now you are going to execute another line you should tell us hey await and what is task whatever is awaiting that particular operation should be considered as a separate thread at the core level a parallel programming can be implemented using only threads only threads for your find some first one thread will be created your execution will be done within that thread within that if you want to execute multiple tasks parallelly here when it comes to this what has to be done here you are not you don't want to wait you have to go to another line now what has to be done at the same time you are not going to stop the execution of this current line it is being executed it has to be executed parallelly it has to be served parallelly are you to me so to make it done what has to be done this particular piece has to be considered as a separate thread and that has to be served parallelly while you are working on other part of your program while the controller while the process is executing other part of your operation right so there can be anything for example here this is one line and this is another line so this is instruction 10 instruction 11 instruction 12 instruction 13 instruction 14 again when it comes to instruction 13 here we are going to call another service we know that sometimes this would also degrade performance like this might take more than time expected that's why at line number 13 also i don't want to wait for this to be completed rather i'll just send the request and go to another line are you to me so here also what has to be done you have to implement asynchronous mechanism within the same program if you are going to call multiple services multiple third services so each execution can be considered as a separate task are you to me so here yeah this is waiting for one service to be completed at line number 30 this is waiting for another service to be completed at line number 20 that will also wait for another service to be completed and apart from these three now these three services should be served parallelly should be executed parallelly at the same time while we are waiting for these three services to be completed we should also execute another part of your sub program another part of your operation now all the four things should be served parallelly how do i achieve this when two things has to be served parallelly what has to be done those two should be considered as two separate threads are you to me so when you talk about a task task is a thread which serves a particular purpose in this case what has to be done each one has to be considered as one task and those tasks are to be served parallelly then you will be able to execute all the things parallelly are you to me so your service one call is going to be one task service two call is going to be one task service three call is going to be another task here you are waiting for service one to be completed you are waiting for service to be completed we are waiting for service three to be completed and while you are waiting for those three to be completed you are also executing another part of your operation so you are splitting your whole operation into different different threads 
and all those threads should be served parallelly so internally what it will do it will consider because each one is going to have its own execution path service one will maintain its own execution path service two will maintain its own execution path service three will maintain its own execution path and the whole thing is having its own execution path a unit of code that is maintaining its own execution path is called a thread so internally what system will do in case of asynchronous programming each wait will be considered as one thread that is called task and all those task will be managed properly will be served properly will be served parallelly now what happens if i go with synchronous programming first i have to wait for service one to be completed until service one is completed i cannot go to next line next when it comes to service two again i have to wait for service two to be completed until service two is completed i cannot go to next line what happens here i am wasting three minutes time here i am wasting three minutes time here i am wasting three minutes time think about the processing time we are wasting lot of cpu time execution time what happens it will slow down your process it will take more time than expected so in order to avoid that so what has to be done in these kind of scenarios better go with asynchronous programming where you don't wait for anything to be completed just send the request don't wait for the response then while it is waiting for that response go to another line and get that completed so this is called asynchronous programming any questions guys no sir now you understood these three keywords right if i want to make yes. find some as asynchronous i have to use the keyword called async if it is async you to whatever the data type that is going to be written should be part of your task because it is going to make use of threads and delegates it should be taken as a task now wherever you want to wait for the response okay so there you would use this keyword i mean i would like to send the request don't wait for the response but it has to be sort parallelly there you would use a keyword called await now i'm just going to convert this here i'm going to write i'm going to make use of anonymous method how do i do that so we have task dot run we have a method called task dot your task comes with run okay so what it will do it will create a separate thread and that execution so wherever you need to make a call to service right i'd like to consider it as a separate execution path and get that served separately parallelly there you have to make use of this okay so task dot run here you can write this this is my method okay here a result is equal to a plus b result is equal to a plus b so what it is saying you are using a task but there is no await keyword right i have to use await here also i can do another program console dot write line i can write another operation also some some from find some is a plus b now what happens once control comes to this line you are saying await await means hey you don't wait for a response to come back this operation will be served parallelly just send the request and go to next line what it will do it will just send the request it means it will just initiate this execution as a separate thread and go to next line now this thread will be executed parallelly 
All right, it will just initiate this execution and go to next line. It doesn't wait for this to be completed. Wherever you use await keyword, what happens? For example, here I just I'm just making some of two numbers. But when it comes to real time application, you may need to call a service. You may need to call some other method, which takes case of a different operation. Okay, so wherever you need to consider it as a separate thread to be sold parallelly, wherever wherever you don't want to wait for the response to come back, there you would use keyword. Now what happens? It will initiate a separate execution process. And that will be considered as a separate execution path. That will be considered as a separate thread. And that will be served parallelly. And while it is serving that particular thread, you don't have to wait for response to come back. Then immediately you can go to another line and start executing it. Any questions, guys? No, sir. No. Okay. Now you know the use of async, use of task. So when it comes to your real-time applications, you will see mostly in many places. Okay, if it is an enterprise application, if that has very good architecture, in 90% of the places, you will see asynchronous methods because nowadays everyone has started implementing it as asynchronous because which saves a lot of execution time, right? Now, if I want to call this method, it is asynchronous method, wherever I need to call it, wherever I need to call it, there I have to use, for example, public int call some. If I want to call it from here, okay, I have to use a keyword called await, await, because this is unconscious method, right? So which makes calls to n number of services, all those will be served parallelly. So to call any asynchronous method, you have to use a keyword called await, find sum of 10 comma 20. But the problem is, if I want to use await, again, I have to make this as a sync. Alright, me. Because if you are using in key, await keyword inside, means it is making a call to asynchronous program. So this program should also become a sync. Alright, me. And here you use a keyword called task. Are you me? Now I can return this. Again, if I want to call this method from main method, what should I do? Again, it is an asynchronous program, right? So whenever you want to make a call asynchronous program, you have to use a keyword called await. If I use await, again, I should also make main as await. Can't we call this without using await keyword? We can, we can. How do we do that? Now I want to stop the asynchronous nature here itself then don't use await keyword. Rather, I can use call sum what is the method? Static. Use static. Otherwise, you have to create object. Call sum of 10 comma 20 uh, it doesn't take any parameter. Okay. Call sum of call sum. If I because it is saying hey, it is a asynchronous method, you would use await keyword. If you don't want to use this, it has implementation called get awaiter dot get result. Now you can stop that asynchronous here itself. From here, you can make it as synchronous. Let's display this. Console dot right line. Sum is this is going to return sum. Mm. Place it after console dot read. Sum from find sum is thirty. Sum is thirty. 
Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. No. So this is something about your anonymous methods and asynchronous methods. So parallel programming can be implemented using both multi-threading as well as asynchronous. But asynchronous would also implement multi-threading concept internally. In one of our previous examples, when we discussed it, we have created multiple threads, right? T1, T2, right? We have created our own threads explicitly and we started those two threads and executed them parallelly, right? T1 dot start, T2 dot start, T3 dot start. It also will do the same thing internally. Okay. So now your C sharp has completed. We will discuss Lingue concepts when we discuss entity framework because there you need to understand the difference between I enumerable and I queryable. And in order to work with your entity framework and link you, first you should become expert in SQL. You should know how to write queries to extract data from your SQL database. Okay. So then you'll be able to understand the link you queries. Okay. So let's spend two to three days to learn the SQL concepts. Then we will start with Windows programming. Okay. There I will let you know, like, you know, how to connect your database using ADO.net as well as entity framework. Then we'll move on to web, your MVC.net core and web API. There it ends. Any questions, guys? No. <clears throat> no, sir. Okay. Okay. So now you have to okay. practice all things, man, especially collections, all collections. Okay. Okay. Collections, next object oriented programming, delegates, threads. Okay. And this thing, your parallel programming, asynchronous methods, and anonymous methods. Okay, so if you start developing your own component, you'll get a chance to implement all these things. In RAR list, you can also make your add remove as asynchronous. So that's why I'm saying just develop at least one component like array list or hash table. You'll get a chance to play with everything, everything, loops, inheritance collections and everything, asynchronous programming, anonymous methods, exception handling, and different types of parameters, like out the ref named parameters, option parameters. Okay. So I want you to implement at least one component in C-sharp, like a release or hash table. If you can do that, you will gain a lot of, lot of knowledge, a lot of experience in C-sharp. That should be enough to work with any C-sharp based project. Okay, sir. Okay, now this is for both of you. Okay. So please start <clears throat> creating it, whether you'll be successful or not. Forget about it. Once you start creating something, you'll get a chance to touch too many things. That way you'll be able to gain a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Start doing that. If you get stuck there, if you get stuck somewhere, I can help you. I'll tell you, like, you know, how to take it forward from there. If you do not start, I'll not get a chance to help you, right? Start doing something. See, you're going to be a developer, right? You should develop your own things. Just think about it, okay? You write your own logic. You should, should not always rely on the built-in things. Always the built-in thing will have limited features. It will have limitations. If you want to go behind that and do something more than that, there you need to write your own programming. Think like a developer. You have to develop your own programming language like C-sharp. You should always think out of the box to do something different from what we have today. Yes, sir. Okay. So start creating the component. I will guide you on that. If you get stuck somewhere, take my suggestions. Whenever you enter your whenever you know, like attend your interview, you can disclose that. 
you can tell that to the interviewer hey i created my own compound like a realist do you want to have a look into it that would define your question the interviewer will think that hey he has created own compound like a realist it means he has very good knowledge about c sharp that would create very good impression are you me see mm-hmm. asking question and answering providing the answer that is a routine thing interview last the question you will provide the answer but if you can present like this apart from your questions and answers tell him as part of your introduction tell him and hey by the way so i would like to update like you no know, i have created my own compound in c sharp like a realist and has to where i got a chance to play with too many things are you you have to you should create the opportunity on your own okay yes sir right so now let's get into sql server okay so today we'll work on introduction to sql server from tomorrow onwards so i'll let you know how to write the queries how to create your views stored procedures functions and triggers okay 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 guys let me finish this okay i should start a separate uh, recording for that sql server anyway uh, we can also continue this and have you installed sql server in your machine do i have it sql yes sir yeah. instant yes sir okay so introduction to sql what is sql sql is a common language like structured query language it is a common standard being used across all database servers whether it is a sql server oracle sybase mysql redshift or anything any database sql is going to be common across all database servers if you work in one database server you will be able to work on other database servers also because the sql is going to be common right now what is sql server management studio your sql server is different sql server management server is different see now when i opened my studio like managed sql server management studio now it is asking me to choose the server name it means what you can connect to not only one sql server you can connect to different different sql servers that are located in different different locations it means sql server management studio is not a sql server sql server is different oracle server is different are you me what is a server server is also kind of a machine like your laptop but that are those are highly scalable machines highly scalable machines are you me it is also like your laptop and your desktop but those are highly scalable machines highly scalable machine is called as a server it can be application server or database server or web server if you are hosting what is a web server what web server will have web server will have collection of websites like your yahoo google what applications are will have it will have collection of applications like services what database server will have it will have collection of databases what will be there in the database server it will have collection of databases what is a database what is a database a database will have collection of data related objects so technically it will have collection of tables and objects that are related to your table what is a table table is like a matrix your server your machine your operating system everything has been created using a program how did they created this sql server management studio using a program that's why i'm saying if you are really good in c sharp or java you can also develop your own management studio like this 
that is the power of your programming languages object oriented programming languages so this entire thing has been created using a program are you me so what is a table a table has been created using a two dimensional array in database where my data will be stored data will be stored in a table when it comes to table what is a table table will have collection of rows and columns which is nothing but a matrix in mathematics which is nothing but a two dimensional array we have implemented two dimensional array site right? where you can see rows and columns right for example if you take excel sheet what is there in excel sheet excel sheet will have collection of rows and columns the excel sheet has been implemented using a two dimensional array are you to me so a table is nothing but the implementation of a two dimensional array where you will have rows and columns the first row will have headers column headers are you to me and from second row onwards we will be storing the data we will leave first row for headings for example when these systems were not available in 80s we used to maintain everything in the register we used to write everything in the register manually for example if you need to maintain a details of a student what do you write first you will write serial number heading next thing you will write right this is what we used to do right what will you do if it is a register you will write it manual number something like serial number for example if you are going to visit apartments still they will maintain the details in the register they will write serial number and your name phone number and from where you are coming in hotels also they do maintain it manually from where you are coming are you to me and signature from then onwards they will write it serial number 1 name samprasad phone number blah 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 next serial number 2 this is what we do manually right in the register so here you are storing your data on the register the register will become your memory if you make it as a system if you automate this process if you want system to do that what has to be done system should also do the same thing you should tell the system how to do it are you ready me so this is called matrix it has three rows and four columns serial number 1 is one column name is second column phone is third column from is fourth column sign is fifth column this is called column you can also call it as a cell a column can also be called it as a cell right these are the headings serial number name so this heading is called as a field in the database you would use some technical terms what is sn sn number is called as a field name is a field phone is a field so first row will have the column names all the fields and second row from second row onwards it will be maintaining the data if you are good in 2d two dimensional arrays you could also implement this manually how did they implement it how the table got created table is nothing but a matrix which will have like this collection of rows and columns what can i do with a database so whenever you want to store your data permanently then you would be needing a database whenever i need to store my data permanently then i would be needing a database where do i store my data how do i store my data in notepad also i can store my data right if i save it it will be stored permanently in my system but this is unstructured unstructured database a database can be categorized two things database what are those unstructured unstructured database semi structured database and structured database 
unstructured database, semi-structured database, structured. Unstructured means like your plain files, text file, where I can store my data using commas operated. Unstructured, your text files, flat files comes under unstructured data. Text file, flat files, raw files. Those are called unstructured data. Semi-structured means your Excel, CSV, XML file. These are semi-structured. And properly structured databases are called your database. Like SQL Server, Oracle, where you can store your data properly. You can manage your data properly. You can get that organized properly. Read me. In case of unstructured, my data will be stored in files. In case of semi-structured, my data will be stored. But compared to text file, Excel, CSV, XML will have their own set of standards. Data will be organized properly compared to text files. If you want to get them organized properly, managed properly, then your approach should be towards a database. Where you can organize your data properly. You can manage it properly, efficiently. You can manage the storage efficiently. Are you getting me? And you could also index your data and you can access your data properly. And you can also make your retrieval process more faster. If something happens, that could also be tracked properly. That is why we will go with databases. Any questions, guys? Any no, question? sir. No. So your text file itself is called as database, but it is a unstructured database. Right? If you are storing something somewhere, means that will become a database. That is the meaning of database. Okay. But these are called unstructured. These are called semi-structured, and these are properly structured databases like your Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL. These are properly structured databases. Okay. In case of structured database, where my data will be stored? My data will be stored in table. What is a table? Table will have collection of rows and columns. Table will have collection of rows and columns. A column is nothing but a field. Like serial number is one column. Name is one column. Phone is column. They have different names. They were named it in different ways. A field is nothing but a column. A column is nothing but a header. Header, column, field, both are same. So, if someone asks you to create a table, what should be the first question that should come from your mind? Hey, what do you want to store? What is your requirement? You cannot go and create the table blind, right? You need to gather the requirement. What type of data is going to be stored? If it is an account, how many fields are going to be there? Like account number, account name, balance, and all these things. Are you getting me? So what type of data is going to be stored? So first, you need to know how many fields are going to be stored. Next, you should also manage the memory efficiently. How do I manage my memory efficiently in programming languages? In scripting language, there are no data types. In all the cases, some common amount of memory will be created. So a lot of memory wastage will be there. But in programming languages, you can manage it properly using data types. If it is a number, you can tell the system to allocate only one byte or two byte. If it is a character, you can tell the system to allocate only one or two byte. Are getting me? So you have to ask them to provide the requirement, like what type of data is going to be stored and how many fields are going to be stored. And in those fields, what type of data is going to be stored? For example, when I say serial number, you should ask the client, hey, what is the possible value that is going to come from this field? Is it a number, character, or alphanumeric, combination of both number and a character? Based on this, you have to define that data type. While creating your table, you should tell the type of each and every column what type of data is going to be stored under serial number? What type of data is going to... So based on that, the system would allocate only that much amount of memory. 
are you to me okay so this is the first question should come from your mind whenever someone ask you to create a table in your repair real time application first ask them to provide the requirement what is the requirement i should create for which screen even if you see the screen also you'll get to know for example if you take registration registration screen what will be the registration like name first name last name date of birth gender right if you need to store that information you have to create a table with those many fields those many columns any questions guys no sir okay so basically at the core level where my data will be stored your data will be stored in the form of a table okay and not only one table we'll be creating collection of table because registration page to store your registration page data you should create one table to store your login information you should create one table to store your account details you should create one table to store your transaction details you should create one table so like this you'll be creating hundreds of tables right i cannot store all my tables as i like in different different places so what has to be like like your structure and classes all your tables should be grouped into a container those should be arranged properly right so that container is going to be your database whenever you want to group collection of tables then you would be needing a container called database what is there inside database a database will have collection of tables and other database objects next i have set up databases because i am working on multiple projects i am working with the different clients i will be creating a dedicated database for client 1 i will be creating a dedicated database for client 2 and client 3 right now if you want to group all your databases into a single unit then you would be needing another container like your namespace called server that is called database server what is a database server a database server will have collection of databases you can create n number of databases within the same server for example you are working with multiple clients yes you can accommodate all the clients within a single server create one database for client 1 clean another database for client 2 create another database for client 3 i can keep all the databases in the same server so a database server will have collection of databases and what is a database a database will have collection of tables and other db objects and what is a table a table will have collection of rows and columns the first row will have column names and rest of the rows will be holding your actual data but coming to the reality when it comes to machine at the core level it can be any database or irrespective of the things if you are storing something at the core level the data will be stored in a flat file that is the reality though you stored it into table but internally again your table data will be converted into a flat file what they did if i store in the beginning in 80s there were no databases there were no databases when you started your journey with pascal and that stuff legacy systems there were no databases like sql server or oracle we used to store everything in flat files but if i store something in flat files so what happens data will not be arranged properly when you want to search for something it would take lot of time are you to me technically in any machine still at the core level data will be stored in flat file only though you are storing your data into tables but still internally it will be converted into flat files so what they did in the beginning we used to store our data this is the journey of your storage what happens we have seen lot of disadvantages we used to get them stored using some comma separated or something separated some using some separator we used to get them stored using some separator like comma hash tab what happens if something gets broke so what happens it is going to be a problem that might corrupt your entire file and your such process would become much more difficult if you want to extract something if you want to insert something in the middle if you want to delete something from the middle 
that process would become much more complex. That's why what I did after some time, they built some wrappers on top of your flat file. The wrapper is called your Excel, CSV, and XML. And this is kind of semi-structured, but still it is not 100%, right? So on top of this, what they did, so this is not the good option. Still we are using them for some requirement. So what they did, on top of your flat file, they built some high-end wrappers to organize your data properly, to make your search process faster, to make other operations easier. What they did, on top of your flat files, they built some wrappers. Those wrappers are called as your tables. Right? So when it comes to database, we'll be directly storing our data into tables. But internally, it will get converted. You are not going to convert it explicitly. You are not writing even single line of code. But internally, it will be converted into flat file. It will be stored in the form of flat file. So whenever any table, any database created, you will see two files, MDF, and dot log file master data file log file so whatever is being stored in table as i said internally it will be converted into a text file that is called mdf master data file your data will be stored in a file called master data file internally you don't have to worry about it you are not going to convert this and if you are doing any transactions like adding something, remove something, deleting something, updating something, those are called transactions. Each and every transaction will also get recorded in a separate file called log file. Any questions, guys? No, sir. No. Okay. This is something about your database server. Okay. When I say database server, there are many database servers are being provided by different organizations. Microsoft is providing their own server called Microsoft SQL Server. Oracle Corporation is having their own server, Oracle, Sybase, Siebel, MySQL, and Redshift. So the SQL is going to be common across all those. And in all high-end database servers, data will be stored in the form of a table where your data will be organized in the form of rows and columns. Columns are also called as fields. In database, you have to call it as a field. Okay. And what is a database server? A database server will have collection of databases. A database will have collection of tables and other DB objects. And a table will have collection of rows and columns. To group your collection of tables, we need a database. To group your collection of database, we need a database server. So we have different types of database servers. Example, Oracle database server, SQL database server. But what is this management studio? So management studio, like your Visual Studio, .NET is different from Visual Studio, is right? .NET is a framework. Visual Studio is an ID, integrated development environment. Visual Studio is providing environment for your application development. But these two are two different softwares. Visual Studio is different. .NET is different. You can also develop .NET applications in another IDs. Mono organization is also providing some IDs. Read me. So in a similar way, your, your database server is different. SQL Server Management is Studio is different. That's why we have to install these two separately. What is SQL Server Management Studio? It is providing environment for your SQL application development. It provides access to SQL Server. Right? So this is my ID where I can write different SQL programs to interact with my database server, my tables. And when it comes to Oracle, Oracle can also be developed anywhere. Oracle is having their own ID. You have another IDs also, some Toad and other IDs also. Are you me? So many IDs are providing environment for your SQL application development. So yeah, in, in case of SQL Server, we'll be using, mostly we'll be using Management Studio only. Any questions, guys? No. Okay. So now you're enter your Server name, type. We also have you know, different services, a database engine. We are going to work with databases. This comes to authentication, right? You cannot allow everyone to access your database, right? Because we'll be storing some sensitive information over there. Here we have two types of authentication majorly, Windows and SQL Server. And these are added recently. Active Directory, Azure Active Directory. 
but these are main windows and sql if i say windows authentication what it will do in order to log into your system you will be using some system account right you would enter user id and password to log into your system it will make use of your system account where you don't have to enter in user id and password but if i choose sql server authentication it will ask me to enter user id and password okay so in order to enable this what you have to do inside your database you have to configure some sql accounts with user id and password and that has to be disclosed with whoever needs to access your database so if you use sql server authentication so it will ask you to enter the user id and password of that sql account if you want to make use of your windows account use windows authentication now i connected to this server this is my server name this is my server name lp0012871 right when you join your real time application they will provide the details server details like server name user id and password okay there you need to enter your server name what i said what is a database server database server will have collection of databases that's a you can see collection of databases and other objects means objects related to your security and other stuff later we will see that what is there inside database a database will have collection of data tables table 1 table these are all tables okay so such so this something about introduction to your database server tomorrow we will see how to create a table how to create it properly using different different conditions then we'll start writing the queries it will be continued for 2 to 3 days okay uh, i'll let you go through all advanced things of sql okay i'll teach you like you know how to write sql queries using different operators so programs okay next how to create a table using different normal forms next views stored procedures triggers and transactions error handling okay it will okay, take sir. yeah three to four days then we will start implementing windows because you need to connect to database from every type of application it can be from console it can be from windows it can be from web it can be from web api okay any questions guys no, no sir okay if no we'll meet tomorrow okay okay i'll be sharing this recording thank you bye okay thank you